So, you know, folks, people are coming, people are leaving, the rents are higher, no one wants to rent, property prices are higher, the market's flat. All the things that we're hearing and, and more about folks that are looking to, are talking about investing in real estate here in South Florida and, and in the Port Lauderdale area. If you have questions like this or any other questions you have about investing in real estate in South Florida or the Fort Lauderdale area. Okay, we have all the 411 on the pros and the cons. So, you know, and folks, for purposes of this video, we're gonna talk about investing from the standpoint of not, not necessarily a primary residence. We're looking at it from the standpoint of either a vacation home, or we're gonna look at it from a standpoint of a second residence, or possibly, which means you could be renting it out for a portion uh, of, the, uh, of the year, okay? Or, or if you're just gonna go ahead and buy an investment property so that you can go ahead and turn around and rent it out from the get-go. So, and we're gonna, we're talking about long-term rentals. We're not going to be talking about the short-term rentals, which are basically 30 days or less, or in some cases, 60 days or less, depending upon the locality. That's a whole different ball of wax, a whole different animal. There's a bunch of nuances for that. And frankly, we've, we've already done a, a video on that, uh, short-term rentals. And you know, you can go ahead and click on this one right here when it pops up. Okay, and you can get all the information about that. That being said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you folks have. So basically, probably the first pro in regards to looking at investing in real estate in South Florida, and more specifically in the Fort Lauderdale area. And that's kind of where we're gonna focus on it. We do source all of South Florida, actually licensed for the entire state of Florida, and we do a lot of work and a lot of business in, in around the South Florida area, Palm Beach County, Broward County, and Miami-Dade. But for purposes of this, we're gonna kind of constrain this to basically the Fort Lauderdale area. That's kind of our backyard, and that's where we really have a lot of specific knowledge and, and a lot of specific experience. So we're gonna talk about the Fort Lauderdale area. Now, this is a very, very, very strong rental market, which is a very, very positive thing for folks looking to invest in real estate. And the reason it's strong is a couple of things. Number one is that people are still coming down to South Florida and coming down to the Fort Lauderdale area. They're coming down in flocks and droves, okay? As a matter of fact, according to U-Haul, and U-Haul of all, of all the ones that came up with this, it was wild, but South Florida, and, the, and this area, the Fort Lauderdale area, is, number, is one of the top one-way destination drop-offs for U-Haul trailers. That's a pretty good indication that folks are coming down here and they're not planning on going back up because they're only renting for going one way. The other thing is that um, Florida, South Florida was one of the most popular destinations, according to Travel Magazine, one of the most popular destinations for traveling coming down. So, so folks are coming down and you know it's a really, really strong rental market and it could be anything from folks coming down for the summer. We've seen a lot of folks that now that school's out around the country, a lot of folks are coming down here looking for rentals for, two, for the two or three months for the June, July, and August month time frame. There's always been a very, very strong rental market over the holidays, anywhere from basically, we call it the high season, but basically anywhere from October through April has always been a very, very strong market. As a matter of fact, we're getting queries coming in right now for folks that are looking, planning ahead and looking, can you help us find rentals starting in December, January, and going up through you know February, March, and April. So it's a very, very strong rental market. A lot of folks are kind of, they're kind of looking at things a little bit differently. Some folks, they're not really sure if South Florida and Fort Lauderdale is where they want to end up. So rather than coming down and buying like they did about a year and a half ago when interest rates were super low and property was super scarce, okay, now that interest rates are a little bit higher, a little cause for pause. So folks are coming down and they're rent renting for six months or they're renting for 12 months before they can go ahead and make a decision on where to buy. Using where they're renting is kind of a base of operations so they can check the areas out. So again, this all contributes and lends to a very, very strong rental market. Probably the first con that to look at, it's the high cost of living. Folks, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna kid you. Okay, living in paradise does come at a price. Okay, and I mean there is a. It's a. It's a very. It's a higher cost of living. For South Florida and Fort Lauderdale is anywhere from 14 to 22 percent, depending upon where you are, above the national average as far as overall cost of living. Property values are up, which is good, but also the cost of property is also up. So it's kind of going up. You know, kind of in kind of. Uh, in conjunction with each other. The other thing that's coming, that's coming up, and folks have probably heard about this, okay, and we'll get into a little more detail about it later, is basically insurance and maintenance. I mean, it's no secret that, that, that Florida, much like other states like California, they're going through what they call a, a homeowner's insurance crisis. Until that sorts itself out, okay, that does have a tendency to bring the cost of living and the cost of ownership down in South Florida and in Fort Lauderdale 
bring it up. I mean, it's gonna, it's cyclical, okay? And it'll correct itself, but for right now, it's something that needs to be considered. The importance of this is that you need to consider that from the standpoint of what you're looking at when you put together your pro forma. If you have any questions about how to do that, we suggest that you reach out to experts like myself and my team you know, we can help you put together your rental pro forma, figure out information like, you know, what does your what does your occupancy rate need to be? What's what is a realistic ROI? What's a realistic cap rate to expect on your on your investments? These are things that you should be asking yourself. But the higher cost of living, even as recently as as two years ago, we're seeing as much as a, as much as a 15 to 18 percent increase in the overall cost of things from 2021 to 2023. Things you need to factor factor in. Some of this you can kind of blend into your rental rates. Okay, so you can kind of offset a little bit. But some of this is, may adversely impact what your what your expected ROI or your expected cap rates are as far as your investment goes. So, folks, you know, Susan and I have been doing videos for a number of years down here, and, and frankly, we love doing it. We love the ability to get on camera and kind of share you know what we've learned and what we know and what we what we actually love about living in the Fort Lauderdale area okay and, and you know we are licensed realtors and we have been doing this for quite some time so you know if you do have any questions about anything in real estate related in South Florida and you know specifically in, in and around the Fort Lauderdale area okay you know you can feel free to give us a call you can text us you can email us you can go ahead and click on the calendar link below Okay, and set up a time maybe we chat for about 40, 45 minutes about any questions that you folks may have. Okay, but you know, as much as we love selling property, and we really do enjoy selling property, but one of the things we really, really enjoy is going out and sharing kind of our percept our perspective and our perceptions and our views on what's going on. And we also love getting the feedback from folks from the folks that are watching our videos. So folks you know, if you're if you're giving us feedback, please continue to do so. If there's anything that you agree with, disagree with, you want clarification on, please feel free to drop it in the box at the bottom of the video, and we'll certainly get back to you as soon as we possibly can. This is basically this, you know, kind of the other, another pro is, is that you know we talked about the high cost of living, okay, but there's also high property values. South Florida has historically seen, you know, an overall increase with the possible exception of being, you know, that dip that everybody experienced in 2008. But overall, South Florida and the, and the and Fort Lauderdale area has seen increasing, has seen ever increasing property values. None probably so more prevalent than we've seen over the past two or three years. Now, admittedly, COVID did have a, the pandemic did have a role to play in this. Um, there's a, there was a significant drop in inventory, which basically allowed those, the folks that were out there selling to, to almost ask what they wanted for the property. We went through that period of about six to eight months where we did that. You're still experiencing, in many cases, historically high property values, but you're not seeing people that are willing to pay fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars over what the asking price was, and, and not worry about the impact on appraisals, and not worried about the impact on 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 anything else on taxes and insurance. So there are high property values coming in. We typically are looking to see anywhere between seven and ten percent an annual increase in property values. Some of the other areas uh, in, in, in the Fort Lauderdale area are seeing much more significant increases. Um, again, depending upon property type and depending upon property use and depending upon what's going on in the area itself. Other areas are seeing more, maybe more moderate between five and six percent. So, but anyhow, you're going to be seeing these types of high, higher property values. Now, this is a great thing from the standpoint of just basically you acquire a piece of property, you go ahead and start getting it from a revenue generating perspective okay and you're gonna start building equity in that property as you continue as you as time goes on so you're going to go ahead and start seeing in addition to having cash flow and hopefully positive cash flow you're going to go ahead and see the, the natural appreciation of property which is going to basically add to the value of your investment in real estate here in the Fort Lauderdale area you know again coming in line with higher property values are going to be high property taxes I mean it's one of these things that just kind of happens as a, as the value of something goes up and then of course the, the localities want to jack up the taxes on it so that they can basically so that they can kind of participate I mean everybody wants to get their fair share so you know and, and we have seen this as we have seen in many cases historically high values that have come through we've also seen significant increases in, in property taxes now there are a couple there are a couple of things that you can kind of do to kind of offset that or kind of mitigate that. First and foremost, I would suggest that you go back and take a look and see so the property that you have purchased, have there been any significant improvements in, in that property lately? Okay, and if haven't been, then trying to put that on par with what's been recently sold, especially if it's been recently updated or upgraded, okay, it gives you kind of a, a good solid foundation for going back and appealing those real estate tax assessments. 
Uh, again, if you have questions about doing that, reach out to myself, reach out to Suze, reach out to anyone, anybody on our team. We can kind of point you in the right direction around there. Okay. And the, the real estate tax assessment appeal process is actually rather rather easy down here. You do it all online. You get, a, you get on a Teams call, you get on a phone call with the folks, kind of present your case. Um, we've been doing it for the past two or three years and we've been successful every single time. So, um, so it's not that difficult. It is something to kind of keep in mind. The other thing to take a look at is that when you buy the property, in some cases what you'll see is the property was a primary residence before and it's it was under a homestead exemption okay and for folks that have, have that have seen some of our other videos we can kind of go off and more on what the homestead exemption is but essentially if it's your primary residence you do get an anywhere between a twenty five and a fifty thousand uh, dollar credit if you will or reduction in, in a portion of the assessment if you're buying this for investment purposes it does not qualify for a homestead exemption that is going to also cause you to see and realize and experience higher real estate taxes before you make that decision let's talk let's talk and make sure that we're looking at this in the right perspective again we want to factor all these things into your financial pro forma you know what you should charge how frequently you should do it what occupancy rate you need what kind of real estate cap rates and ROIs are in there real estate taxes are probably one of the top two or three most significant costs involved in investing in real estate here in Fort Lauderdale area so you know we just talked about high real estate taxes okay but one of the offsets to that is basically overall all the other taxes are lower okay Florida is one of the few states in the country that has no state income tax they do not impose a state income tax they do not collect it okay that can be a significant boon for folks that are coming down into this area looking to invest in in this area when you're not paying state income tax it's almost like getting a pay raise I mean especially when you go back and compare it to some of the other states in the country that have anywhere between 8 and 13 percent state income tax that's a huge huge boon for what's going on that also attracts a lot of folks a lot of foreign investors coming in we'll talk about the impact of foreign investors coming through okay but what this does this low tax is a low tax base from the standpoint of income and from the standpoint of sales tax and whatnot okay that also that's that's a very very attractive appeal for folks that are that are that live outside the United States to come in and invest also there are some things going on in the overall global economy that also make it very very appealing and very very advantageous for foreign investors to come in but again basically you know the fact that this is a very desirable location is a very cosmopolitan location does create kind of an international demand a lower overall tax base you know does make this a very very popular area and it, you know we look at it as kind of a pro because even though you're gonna pay a little higher real estate taxes you can offset those most most of your other taxes especially state income tax are gonna be either very very low or non-existent so you know we've talked about this in every single one of our videos and you know I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up again for some folks who are not as familiar with South Florida and with the Fort Lauderdale area okay I mean you know I'm assuming you're gonna be cognizant of this because you're looking to invest whether it's full-time rental properties whether it's part-time from the standpoint of vacation home and you're gonna live in it a couple times we climate is a consideration okay we are prone to hurricanes we are prone to tropical storms thank goodness we've only we're not really prone to twisters and tornadoes although a few have touched down this needs to be something that you need to consider coming down here if you're not sure how you're gonna deal with this if you're not sure that you can get that you're gonna be able to understand how this works okay while folks are flocking to South Florida and they're flocking to the Fort Lauderdale area between June and November okay it's hurricane season we haven't been hit very hard in the last couple number of years uh, in fact the last time we actually even got tapped a little bit was when Irma came through in 2017 okay but this is something that you need to consider. You may need, depending upon where the property is, and depending upon whether it's a condo or a single family home, you may need things like flood insurance, okay? Or you may need to have additional insurance going in. You also need to be cognizant that if you're in a condo, okay, that the condos themselves are going out, always going out and doing whatever they can do to help make sure that the building and the association and the surrounding areas, okay, are as best prepared for inclement weather or for the hurricanes or for any type of climate type related uh, urgencies. So again, factor these things in when you're, in your thinking. If you're not sure, reach out to us, ask us. We're more than happy to share all the information we have. If you have questions, we'll get the answers for you. So, but again, it's something to consider. I mean, it's a fact of life. There's rain, there's tropical storms, and apparent, uh, occasionally there's hurricanes. So, you know, we talked about climate, okay, and we're going in here. So, but basically the reason that people come down to South Florida, the reason they come to Fort Lauderdale, okay, is because of the weather. I mean, you know, you get, you basically have year round, it's an endless summer. I mean, it really kind of sums it up from that perspective, but I mean, you can be outside year round, okay? And that type of a weather, that's conducive to people wanting to come down here, especially when they're, when they're, you know, it's very, very cold or there's snow and there's sleet and, 
freezing rain up in other parts of the country, folks are flocking to come down here. And you will see as a real estate investor, or potential real estate investor, you will see significant variances between what we call off-season rental rates, which is basically May through the end of September, and high season rental rates, which is basically October through April, significant variances. In some cases, it's as much as 35 to 50% difference in the high season. Folks are willing to pay to come down here so they're not freezing their butt off other parts of the country. There's something to be said for being able to play 18 holes of golf in the middle of January, okay? And you're playing it in shorts and you're playing it in a short sleeve shirt, okay? There's something to be said for baby being able to FaceTime your friends from the beach okay as you're catching your your january 31st suntan okay and they're up in the northeast okay and there's and they're 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 happy if the temperatures get above zero so the other thing too is, is that you know with with all this great warm weather and all these great things that are going on you have basically year-round enjoyment for things like the beach for things like golf we also have seen our significant improvements in you know being able to get fresh seafood be able to get fresh fruit and fresh vegetables down here down in the fort lauderdale area i mean having ships coming in all the time the other thing you're going to see is that from october through about may too is you start to see there's a huge huge increase in tourism especially in the cruise industry the Port of Miami at Port Everglades are numbers two and three of the top cruise ports in the world. The number of folks here that come down to this area to a day or two before or stick around a day or two after a cruise is just absolutely amazing. These are the kind of things that you can be looking at. There are folks that will come down here and look and they want to stay. And, they, and when they, if they have an opportunity to stay down here for a day or two, they'll find out how much they enjoy it. Okay, And then next time, instead of going on a cruise, maybe what they're looking to do is come down and spend a month or two months or three months down in the Fort Lauderdale area. So this, all, this weather is so very, very conducive to people coming down on a regular basis. And the, just the number of folks that are coming, that are coming down to visit are, are just increasing. The number of folks that are migrating to come down to Fort Lauderdale area is also on the rise. So, and that creates all kinds of opportunities for rental properties and for rentals. I'm not sure exactly how to, you know, how to lay this out. So I'm just going to kind of just lay it out there. Okay. There are some legal and regulatory challenges that from the standpoint of the localities, and there are also some, some potential challenges as far as, you know, can you rent here? What can you rent? Now, a lot of it's going to determine where you are, you know, whether you're in Fort Lauderdale or whether you're in Deerfield Beach or Pompano Beach or, or Laredo by the Sea or Hollywood. But the other thing too is you need to look at is from the standpoint of are you looking to invest in condos? Are you looking to invest in single family homes and you know in, in houses? The reason that's so significant is that is that most of the communities have either a homeowners association or a condo owners association. There's a few that don't, okay, and those are the ones that basically get snapped up just like that. The, the homeowners associations, they're usually a little bit more kind of in accordance, live and let live. Condo associations, folks, if you're looking at condos, it's only fair to warn you. There's a reason why we call them condo commandos down here. Some of the condo associations are very, very rigid in what they're doing. It's not unusual at all for some of our clients to have found a property in, an, in a condo that they love. Great location, everything that they want to have, only to find out that they can't rent it out for at least the first year or two years. Or there are, in some cases, there are limits on the number of times that you can rent it out in a 12 month period or the minimum rental time. In some cases, it may be you can rent it out twice in a 12 month period, but they only allow it with 12 month rentals. Kind of mixed up a little bit if you, if you ask me. But these are some of the things that you need to be cognizant of. So again, speaks to reaching out, work talking to experts like my team and I about, you know, what are you, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to rent it out completely 100% of the time? Are you looking to have the flexibility to come down when it's not rented out? Kind of go from there. And also a lot of that comes are also around the location. The ones that are closer to the beach are usually a little bit more flexible in what they do because they realize that folks are going to rent this back out and, you know, and they're going to take care of the property because of the property location. But again, before you make a decision, before you make that final decision, okay, you need to take a look and see, are there any regulatory, either from the standpoint of the localities or from the standpoint of the association, challenges or potential restrictions on that property. We talked a little bit about the climate. We talked a little bit about high property values. We talked a little bit about things that are coming, but a lot of this all comes down to the fact that, you know, Fort Lauderdale, okay, it, it, its foundation was in tourism. And, and we do have a number of industries that are coming in and the, and the economy is expanding, okay. But at the end of the day, okay, it's still a very, very popular tourist destination. 
Whether you're coming down to, to see the International Boat Show in October, whether you're coming down to experience one of the many, many festivals that go on in the Fort Lauderdale area on a regular basis, whether you're just coming down to the beach, maybe you're coming down to do a little pre-planning as far as, you know, are you looking to ultimately retire down here? You can check out one of our videos on retiring in South Florida, in the Fort Lauderdale area for more information and specifics on that. But basically, this is a very, very high tourism area. Folks coming are coming in here at an amazing rate. In fact, I, read, I just recently read that in 2022, there were over 37 million people that came down to the Fort Lauderdale area. Folks, that's amazing. And I can guarantee you that those folks didn't come down for a day and then drive away. Some of those folks came down here for a couple of days, some for a couple of weeks, some for a couple of months. All this has a very positive impact on the ability to basically rent okay and it has positive impact on the rental rates that you can charge and that you can expect to see again high season high rental rates low season you're still getting very very good rental rates in many cases you're going to get rates that will that will be able to cover all of your costs and then some and still give you a nice positive cash flow coming through but the tourism industry down in fort lauderdale area does actually form the foundation for folks coming in here on a regular reoccurring basis so you know when we talked a little bit about foreign investors we talked a little bit about you know because of the low tax base and whatnot but the rental market from the standpoint of finding rental properties there is a significant amount of competition and a lot of the competition you know it used to be just basically between you know folks that were going to buy or rent a few and whatnot then we kind of saw some of the property management companies coming into it they come in and scoop up you know when nobody was buying properties and there were some basically distressed sales they come in and scoop up single-family homes they come in and scoop up some condos you know do the renovation work what we're really seeing right now is because of the reduction in the strength of the dollar and the increase and the strength of some of the other foreign currencies, we're seeing a lot of foreign investors coming in and looking to invest in South Florida and the Fort Lauderdale area real estate market from an investment perspective. Now, of course, these folks are never going to come and stay in their property, okay? Many of them, South America, Central America, Europe, Asia, they're from all over the world. But when they have strong dollars, local currency, okay, basically that means they don't have to spend as much of their currency to get a piece of property here. And the dollar is down against most foreign currencies rather significantly over the past couple of years. I mean, it's still fluctuates okay and I'm not a currency specialist by any stretch but I do know that going back and taking a look at exchange rates when Suzanne and I travel okay that's basically you know we've even seen it in, in places like Mexico where the exchange rate is a lot less than it used to be when I would when I used to go down to visit family down in Mexico so that's one of the big things is now we're seeing foreign competition okay another thing is that we still have relatively low inventory okay especially when it comes to single-family homes okay there's not a whole lot of them for a couple of reasons reason number one is folks have been made over the last couple years due to the pandemic and whatnot they've made significant improvements and changes in their homes to make them more comfortable and more of what they want to say so they're not really ready to move out yet second reason for that is basically they they themselves don't know where they want to go now there are some folks that are selling their homes and going to condos because they want to down they want to downsize a little bit but again I mean if you have a single-family home okay and you want to sell it and you want to go to another single-family home Given the fact that there's lower inventory, unless you're going to leave the area, end up once you sold your property, you now become part of the buyers, and now you're fighting for everybody else to try to find that particular property. You know, when inventory has been and has been low, and it still is at very, very low volumes. Another consideration for competition, if you will, is that you know, with with the advent of HGTV and all these fix it and flip it, all these other kind of things that are going on, what ends up happening is a lot of properties that you would have, the people would originally consider purchasing from an investment perspective. What's happening now is a lot of foreign investors are coming in and they're basically buying it, paying cash, putting money into it, turn around and flipping it so that the same property that you were looking at in January, maybe you were looking at a, a $400,000 or $500,000 condo on the intercoastal or six or $700,000 two or three bedroom condo on the ocean, Okay, once somebody comes in and buys it and does a lot of renovation work, now you're looking at something that's gone up in price 15, maybe even 20%. Okay, that's going to cause some concerns. It's going to cause, give you a little cause for pause. We're also seeing a lot of the fix it and flip it type of a things going on there. There's no shortage of contractors down in South Florida. There's no shortage of contractors in and around the Fort Lauderdale area. So there's a, it's a very, very active business going on right now. So that's something else to consider. You know, if you see something that you're, that you're interested in, okay, make sure that you're doing that quick assessment on whether or not you can rent it out the way it is or how much money you need to put into it before you start going into that whole process so that you don't end up finding yourself in a fix it and flip it as opposed to a as opposed to a buy it and rent it so folks overall investing in real
real estate in South Florida can be a profitable venture for investors who are willing to do their homework okay, and do the research okay, and manage their properties effectively. This is the reason why we continue to advocate working with experts like my team and I to make sure that we can kind of give you the information that you need. Folks, I'm not a property manager. I don't want to be a property manager. I've done the rental piece myself and everything and whatnot. Okay, and I find that I am much more effective as a realtor going out and doing the research that needs to be done to help you determine what appropriate cap rates should be, what appropriate ROI should be. These are the kind of things that we really excel and we really differentiate ourselves in. So if you have any questions about investing in real estate in South Florida and the Fort Lauderdale area, please feel free to give us a call, shoot us a little text, give a little email, click on the Calendly link below. You can set up an appointment. We'd love to talk to you for about 40, 45 minutes about what your goals, your strategies, your plans are. So just feel free to reach out.